Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny. Welcome back to some more FNAF news. This one's going to be a bit of a quick one, but we also have a lot of very interesting and important news to discuss. We got updates on the FNAF movie, a few of the fan games, and the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, including an update on the recently revealed new T Jock, Ignited Freddy model, a weekly Pop Goes update, which shares a bit of info on the upcoming Pop Goes Hex plushie, and we've also got an update on some upcoming YouTube's products, as well as the FNAF Pillow Pet. So, without further ado, let's Let's not waste any more time if you're brand new to the channel make sure you subscribe we're trying to get 50k by the end of the year also while you're down there hit the like button let's kick this video off by talking about yet another brand new fnaf shirt this time it's not from hot topic instead it's from spencer's and ooh, look at how creative spencer's can get yep they took the sun and moon posters from security breach and just put them on a black t-shirt very innovative stuff right here spencers thank you so much moving on to some merchandise news that's a bit more exciting we actually got our first official look at the upcoming fnaf pillow pet of freddy fazbear last time we talked about the pillow pet i believe they were still in the planning stages making a few prototypes updating the designs based on feedback and it looks like this is the final design which is a little disappointing because the ears are still lighter than all the other fur on his body which i know is a major complaint a lot of fans have had a problem with but i think as long as you can look past that pretty obvious glaring issue it looks like he's gonna be a very very fluffy snuggly friend to have pretty soon there's no release date yet but i'd assume pretty soon we'll get one because again it looks like they're, they're finally done with him this looks like the final official fnaf pillow pet which is very exciting next up we got a brand new grab and go bundle from fat mojo based around security breach and it looks like each bundle is going to contain three mystery figures one mystery trading card one mystery sticker and one figure slash card display base and honestly i think some of this looks pretty good uh, apart from monty's paint job but i like the style they're going for with the figures i like the ideas of collecting trading cards especially because it looks like they have different rarities you can see a gold freddy uh figure in front of a rare yellow vanny card so that's going to be interesting it also looks like vanny's card number 19 so it looks like there's going to be quite a few different cards to collect it's also worth noting this is an online exclusive item i'll have it linked down below if you're interested and want to go pick it up moving on now to u2s we don't have too many reveals but they did drop a few brand new info on upcoming products first up they revealed that the next fnaf wave is going to be dropping in mid-December, and that it'll include four different figures, most likely Purple Guy, Golden Freddy, Springtrap, and another figure, because we've seen all of those figures recently. And then they also revealed, this is probably the best news we're ever going to get in the FNAF history of, of history of FNAF, that we will be getting a spinnable wet floor sign figure, which is great, and I love the fact that it's spinnable, because if you didn't know, actually if you shoot the wet floor signs with your Fazer Blaster, it'll spin around a little bit. So I think that's a great touch. Maybe not everyone's most anticipated uh, FNAF character to get a figure, but I love that they're going the extra mile and making it spin. Moving on now to Hex, we got Toy Freddy a officially revealed to us in full and just like the pillow pet i'm assuming that this is going to be the final design they're going for i think it looks pretty good as you can see he comes with this microphone that's going to be toy freddy's accessory and i'd assume based on all the pictures we've gotten recently of the full reveal of toy freddy and also balloon boy recently and hex changing their twitter username to hex wave 3 coming soon I feel like we're in the home stretch, and hopefully, I mean, by the end of this year, we'll have an official release date for these guys, as well as full looks at all the characters. I think all we're waiting on right now is an updated look at Toy Chica and also Toy Bonnie. So I'm very excited for Wave 3, but unfortunately, we do have some sad Hex news. Because Kane Carter revealed that the fanverse wave of Hex plushies have unfortunately been delayed to next year it looks like hex wanted to focus a bit more on getting the toys out and so they unfortunately had to sideline the fanverse plushies though because of this news kane did show off an exclusive look at the back of pop Ghost's head and what's unique about the pop Ghost plushie is that to simulate the pop Ghost character having 3d printed designs they're actually going to be using corduroy to give the illusion that it is still kind of 3d printed which i think is an amazing touch it looks fantastic too so it's not taking away from the plushie so yeah unfortunately that they're being delayed to next year but honestly it looks like they are making great progress so far so even if we have to wait as long as they look good i'll be satisfied and speaking of pop goes kane showed off the hex plushie in a brand new weekly devlog which we're going to take a look at right now for the pop goes evergreen section of the devlog kane mentions that they're moving on now to 3d modeling for the post night segments of the game which is actually where we're going to see these brand new versions of the toy characters and actually kane showed off a brand new image of the what i call the sleep paralysis toy freddy 
character, but Kane apparently is going to be calling him the false Toy Freddy, at least that's his name for right now. He says that he finds the idea of the characters being untrustworthy strangers, <laughs> dare I say imposters of the real toys, more disturbing than just being distortions of them. So for right now, at least he's going with the name False Freddy or False Toy Freddy. Pop Goes Evergreen apparently has had a major bug. Hi, I'm editing. I don't know why I keep calling Pop Goes Arcade Pop Goes Evergreen. Someone called it out in the comments of the last FNAF News video. I, <laughs> there's something in my brain that just cannot get across the fact that I am saying Pop Goes Evergreen during recording instead of actually saying Pop Goes Arcade. So I, I apologize, I'm stupid, but you know, we're talking about Pop Goes Arcade. Okay, bye now. Pop Goes Evergreen apparently has had a major bug ever since the last update came out. Luckily, Kane and the team are getting work on that right now. So that's a quick update on Pop Goes. Now let's move on to T-Jock with, once again, some very sad news. Because Nixon has revealed that he is unfortunately not allowed to use the brand new Ignited Freddy model that we saw in a previous FNAF News video because the modeler is actually under 18, something that Nixon wasn't aware of. And because to be in the fanverse, you have to sign a few contracts, and also to sign those contracts, you need to be over the age of 18. The person who modeled the T Jock Freddy uh, was not over 18, so unfortunately, they can't use that work. So, very bummer news, but fortunately, it looks like Nixon has found a replacement, which is very exciting and also very relieving. So, I can't wait to see what the new Ignited Freddy is going to look like. And now we move on to the final news topic for today, which is a brand new update on the FNAF movie being made by Blumhouse. Because once again, FNAF was featured in Production Weekly's lineup of films, and because it was featured, Featured recently, we got brand new info on the film, specifically the fact that it's being shot in New Orleans. Previously, the filming location was just the, the overall state of Louisiana, but it looks like they've pinpoint now it's going to be in New Orleans. And also, Bad Cupcake Productions is behind the project, which may seem a little weird. What is Bad Cupcake Productions? Well, it's not really a real company. Instead, it's a production company that Blumhouse has made specifically to work on the FNAF film. So eventually, when they put out auditions, for example, the film will be listed under Bad Cupcake Film, made by Bad Cupcake Productions. You know, stuff like that. The film's not actually going to be called Bad Cupcake, obviously. It's just going to be called Five Nights at Freddy's. It's just during production, it's going to be called Bad Cupcake, and the studio behind it, or the, uh, the production behind it, is going to be Bad Cupcake Productions. Which overall sounds a bit weird and complex, but honestly, all you have to know is that production is well underway with the film, and since shooting is still set for early February, and they've specifically pinpointed a filming location, and they've got production behind it, it's going great. It looks like it's finally on track to make progress, which is very, very, very exciting good news. But that's going to do it for this quick FNAF news video. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'd love to know what you think about all the news topics we talked about in today's video, specifically the updates with T-Jock, maybe some hex stuff, as well as what character do you want to see made into a U2s next, and also the FNAF film. But thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.